Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at a couple of other elasticities to go along with the elasticity of demand that we looked at last time. And those elasticities include the cross price elasticity, the income elasticity, and the price elasticity of supply. The first one, we, one we're going to look at is the cross price elasticity, and that's looking at um, how a change in the price of one good will affect the quantity demanded of a different good. And so what we're looking at here is whether uh, we have a substitute or a complement on our hands. So um, we want to make some sense out of the, the, uh, the sign that we get out of this elasticity to determine how we figure out whether it's a substitute or a complement. So let's take a look and try and think through this together. Again, the cross price elasticity is looking and saying, if I change the price for one good, what does that do to the quantity demanded of the other? And so if there's no effect, if the price of one good changes and it does nothing to the quantity demanded of the other good, then we would say that what we have um, are unrelated goods. So that's like saying if the price of a stapler goes up, what does that do to the quantity demanded for uh, a Coke? Well, nothing. Um, and so therefore they're unrelated. But let's look at some related goods and see what happens. Um, if the, the good, um, the, the price goes up for one uh, and the quantity demanded goes down for the other, we're saying that's a positive number in the denominator, a negative number in the numerator, so our pr cross price elasticity of demand is a negative number. When that happens, we're talking about complements. So if the price of peanut butter goes up, then I will demand less jelly. And that would be a negative number for cross price elasticity because those two goods are complements. If, on the other hand, the price of one goes up and the quantity demanded for the other good goes up, so that both the numerator and denominator are going in the same direction, have the same sign, then we know that the cross price elasticity will be positive. When they're positive or greater than zero, we're talking about substitutes. So if the price of Pepsi goes up, then I will substitute Coke for Pepsi. I will have the quantity demanded for Coke will increase. And because both these numbers are positive, our cross price elasticity number is positive and we're talking about substitutes. Another elasticity is income elasticity and this looks at two different things. One is whether it's a normal good or an inferior good and then if it's a normal good is it a luxury or a necessity. With income elasticity we're looking to see what happens uh, to quantity demanded given a change in income. If my income goes up do I want more of the good or less of the good? And so the first thing we can look at is say, if my income goes up, it's positive, and my quantity demanded goes up, positive, um, then we're looking at a normal good. So anytime income elasticity is greater than zero, we're talking about a normal good. Because to be less than zero is to say that if my income goes up, I want less of the, of the good, which is the classic definition of an inferior good. But we want to know more than just whether it's normal or inferior. We want to know whether the good is a necessity or a luxury. And we can determine that based on the, um, the number that income elasticity comes out as. Again, let's take a look at this equation. We look at the, uh, the equation, we see that income elasticity tells me a percent change in income affects my uh, percent change in quantity demanded. So if we have a continuum again like we had before, um, similar to price elasticity of demand, if the percent change in income goes up by the same as the percent change in quantity demanded, that's one, it's sort of like a unit elastic, though it's not technically the term here. Um, but then we can look and say, okay, what happens if, what type of good is it, where uh, percent change in, in income is larger than the percent change in quantity demanded? Because in that situation where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, we're going to be less than one greater than zero because we're talking about normal goods but less than one and if that's the case what we're saying is my income goes up but I'm not buying a whole lot more of the good than I was before that would be an indication then that that good is a necessity so it's income inelastic my income rises but I don't need to buy more because I'm already buying as much as I actually need that's sort of the definition of a necessity a luxury good is one in which we're income elastic meaning my income goes up and the quantity demanded that of that good will go up by more than the increase in my income does. So what that indicates is I'm, I'm not buying a whole lot of that good right now. 
um, because maybe I don't have the money for it, but as my income rises and I'm able to afford it, I will want more of it and significantly more of it relative to the change in my income. So when we see uh, income elasticity between zero and one, this number, total number is a, is a, is a fraction that's less than one, meaning that the, the demand is not changing by as much as the change in income. That's a necessity. When it's greater than one, it means that demand is changing by more than income. It's a luxury. The last one we're going to look at is price elasticity of supply. And it's basically the exact same thing as price elasticity of demand, only we're looking at the supply curve. So it's looking at how responsive is supply given a change in the price of the good. Um, and, and again, what we're looking at here is um, when there's no change, when the elasticity of supply is zero, it means that there's no change in quantity of supply given a change in price. In that case, we're looking, um, you're looking at something that's inelastic or vertical supply curve and perfectly elastic, just like with demand, would be horizontal with an infinite um, elasticity of supply. When it comes to the price elasticity of supply, uh, what we find, at least um, when we look in the book and we read more about it, we find that there are two major drivers that are affecting the elasticity of supply. One is the availability of inputs. If, there are, uh, if inputs can be switched into and out of production, easily, then our supply tends to be more elastic. It'll be more responsive to changes in price because I have more options um, available to me when it comes to making the good. And time is another one. If I have lots of time uh, to respond to a change in the, in the market, then elasticity tends to be much more uh, elastic than if there's a very limited amount of time in order to respond to a change. We're going to spend some more time in, in class practicing these, um, and I will see you then.